This is Up Close, SABC News weekday program that profiles men and women making waves in the industries and gives newsmakers a platform where they can share their stories and vision as we hope to inspire you, our viewer. I'm Tabal Mutagua. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as we get up close to the Honorable Mayor Mwandli Gungubele. A product of the trade union movement, Mr. Mondli Gungumbele has extensive experience in the public sector. He sharpened his political and negotiation skills during his years with the National Union of Mine Workers, NUM, COSATU, and in the ANC branches. Mr. Gungumbele became a member of the Gauteng Provincial Legislature after the 1994 democratic elections and since then has contributed his leadership to sectors such as health, sports and economic affairs. But did you know that the mayor holds a national diploma in nursing? Well, what else don't we know about this leader? Mayor, thank you so much for making the time to join us. Uh, thank you, Tsepang. Thanks to your <laughs> audience. <laughs> and uh, why are you laughing when I introduce you that you have a national diploma in nursing? It's something that is not usually known about myself. Because okay. Because I last did that profession around 1991. Wow. Yes. Okay, let's start right at the beginning. Amelia, where did you grow up? I grew up uh, in the district of Ngobo in the Eastern Cape, yes. former Transkei. Um, grew with my aunt, my mother's sister, in a place so rural called Kuben. That is where my formative stage in terms of learning how to plow, how to stick fight, how to look after cattle and sheep, how to milk cows, how to... Uh, remove the hair to shear the, 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 the okay. sheep, um, how to get involved in traditional dances of boys, and um, how to interact with girls. I see, I see your face, it's like it's glowing. So that must have been an incredible childhood. Very critical, especially mm. when I look at how I have survived over years, mm -hmm. how that history and that formative period contributed to my strength as I deal with the storms mm. of the later life. Explain that a little bit further. I mean, like, w what was it? Was it um, the, the, the community that it was so close, that the cultural practices, the discipline of the work that you used to do? What is it that you take I, from those I, I grew in what I would call a very traditional African community. In that community, all children yes. report to all parents of the community respect all parents of the community. So any parent, any time who meets you in, at any place mm -hmm. had a right to tell you, stop doing that. Yes. If you do anything wrong, it doesn't matter whether you knew an adult or not, you had to run away because the value system was common. Mm. So what you are taught at home is what the community mm. was actually uh, so, uh, actually adhering to, mm. is what the community was upholding. So it was that kind of a community, but a lot of things occur there. It's a closer traditional community yeah. where there's, you know, you have to be a boy before you become a man yeah. and go to the mountain. As a boy, before you go to the mountain, mm -hmm. you are allowed to misbehave as much as you want because when, I, when you look back at it, you say, maybe they were trying to eliminate and mitigate against possibility of regressing when you're old. Uh -huh. So when you're a boy, you can do whatever. Every time you do a that forget he's a boy. So that's why closer boys are so naughty. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. So there you, you, as a closer boy, you're allowed to say, you know, do, do, do whatever, do, have fun. Not uh, stick fighting, chasing other boys, <laughs> chasing one another. At times, uh, being naughty towards girls. <laughs> I remember one of the interesting things was used to happen is that as boys would towards Christmas we would meet, yes. collect some few cents preparing for Christmas. Okay. Now you go home and you tell your uncle or father, we have appointed so-and-so to lead us. Mm -hmm. They would ask, who? I said, but we've never had him being called before us. He, maybe he hit somebody or he, he did some trouble. Yeah. That person, what does he know? How can you be led by somebody who that the community never spoke about? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could say that they really treasured this behavior, yeah. this this 
thing of allowing you to 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 do your best as a boy yeah. and so on. Yeah. Mm. And then, but what what is the changes then that happens? Then the the young man, as yourself specifically, you go in Dublin and you come back, and you're supposed to change your behavior. I, I, actually, when you go to in Dublin, <coughs> now they spend one month. Yes. Uh, in my time, you'd yes. spend three months and more. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. <coughs> in particular, from my family, the Kongobele family is a Matiba family, is a royal house. Yes. So we try to stick to the old tradition, to the best of our ability. So what happened, you are kept there for about three months, being trained on how to become a man, mm. being contained under particular restrictions, being tested mentally and otherwise. Mm. By the time you get out there, you are a new person. Mm. And then there's that big event, Umgidi, where you are called, said, now we are receiving you as a Kosa man. Mm -hmm. Now, a, from a Kosa man, this is what is expected. And I can tell you, for years, it's been working. Even now, it's working, but now, you know, South Africa has actually become a common nation, mm -hmm. detribalized. These things don't work exactly in the manner they used to work before, but it's still there. Mm. It's mm. interesting that you should say mm. that. I remember we had a conversation with Bantu Holimisa. He was even talking about <coughs> the school that existed then mm. that uh, young boys from royal families used to go to. to mm. And they used to get trained mm. in like worldly affairs That's at true. such a young age. Tolo, tolo, tolo school of... Yes. The ch of the sons of the chiefs, chiefs yes. and kings. Yes. They used to go there. Uh, they would be schooled indeed about leadership mm. and everything else. Mm. Yes, mm. he's correct. Mm. Yeah. So that was part of that culture that yes, you grew yes, up around, yes. that closer culture. African people mm. had a system of socializing their kids, mm. a system of growing up their kids. Uh, it just got messed up when cultures were trying to fuse. You know, when the, the stage of cultural fusion mm. create confusion before you become a common nation. Mm, mm. Mm, mm. So uh, growing <coughs> up in that, uh, I think I would say it's very supportive uh, environment. What happens next in, 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 in your life? How do you end up uh, getting involved in the trade unions? Very interesting. Uh, I grew at my aunt's place. You know, school was not highly, uh, it was not a highly commended place. Yes. So I remember my aunt's husband used to say, when you finish standard four, mm -hmm. now you are finished. Mm. Uh, you can go and be a traditional boy. Yes. And we wear those uh, coat skins and everything. I couldn't wait to be that boy. <laughs> yes. uh, and uh, that was the ambition. But when I spoke with my mother and my, and my eldest sister and my eldest brother, I said, no, man, this is nonsense. We must take you out of that place. And I left that place after standard, um, was standard? standard two. Uh, I left there, and my mother kept me. I do you at my pl sister's place, okay. where I did standard two. Came back to Ngobo, where I was. Our, our, my mother had uh, two rendezvous, but that is why I started doing standard three, standard four. And continue After with standard you. four. Okay, let's hold it there. I want to take a break, and then we'll come back. Okay. We'll continue yeah. with the uh, uh, mayor. Uh, we continue with Mayor Monty Gugubela after the break. Do you have any suggestions or comments about the show? My Twitter handle is at Tepi Mutsugua. Would greatly appreciate it. Stay with SABC News. Oh, Mayor. Yes, we're ready. We're ready. Sorry. Just ignore me. I know I. Okay. I think I'm I'm good. Am I not? I think I'm good. <laughs> and they put on makeup. I think I'm good. These lights are very hot, so I tend to perspire. But I think I'm fine. We're gonna lose momentum. We're having a nice chat. <laughs> oh, growing up, it's it's so different, you know. I must say, because I grew up in the homelands as well. Umama is from.
Thank you for staying with us as we get up close with Mayor Monli Gugubel. Let's continue. You go, you move to your mother now, you get to do standard four. Standard four. four. What happened? I was actually beginning to experience serious difficulties. Okay. Being looked after by a single mother. Mm. My father was somewhere around the world. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, up until that stage, I had not seen my father. Okay. Uh, they married and then he went wherever he went. He, was he working in the cities? Well, uh, he was working in many places. Okay. Uh, Sasolberg mm -hmm. being the place. Yes. So difficulties were clothing. I had to do a lot of patch because you had holes in your trousers mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. Now towards mm -hmm. December, I was beginning to patch the patch. You, you know, patching the patch. Mm -hmm. Even the patches were starting to have it, holes. Exactly. And I realized it was very difficult. 1973. That was a, that was a big change, hey, yes. because you you'd grown up as a boy who yeah. didn't even experience lack, That's having a good time, yeah. and now you're growing up Ex with a single mom. I was an exceptional mm. boy at, at, at the primary school, always number one. Yeah. But I had to leave what I love so much. Mm. 1973. I was a young boy who went whatever, and uh, at my age we were not allowed. Mm. But a certain Mr. Chogol, who just passed about a couple of weeks ago, passed okay. away, said all these other boys are not allowed. But this one, because I know his situation, yes. it's very difficult. Yes. Let the mind decide what it does with his age. So I was allowed to go through. Oh, wow. At that time, 97, you can imagine, if I was born in 97, I was 15 years and a couple of months. Yes. So I went to Doran Fontaine Mine. They, they didn't allow me to go underground. Wow. I was the youngest in that mine. That mine is closed now. The youngest sure. boy. Actually, I would say, they say, in the working environment, there, I was the youngest. Mm. It was 1973 towards the end. So I worked there. I was quickly promoted as a team leader. I was at a 16? Bit, uh, yes, I was a team leader quickly. I was oh, wow. a little bit, uh, it's a little yeah. brightness that I showed at work. <laughs> I was promoted as a team leader. Yes. They, when you're a team leader, you get a badge. And then you become different. Because we used to get 55 cents a day. Uh -huh. And suddenly, I was getting two rand hey, wow. a day. <laughs> yeah, because I'm a, team money. Leader. I'm a team leader. Oh, yes. Working in, in a place called the Filters. Mm -hmm. Filters is the final stage before gold becomes that brick okay. uh, and so on. So that final stage is a final refinery and so on. So I worked there because I understood what was happening there mm -hmm. with my standard four. So work there, 74, 75, end of 75, I went on leave. Mm -hmm. I went home. Okay. Around January, I saw the guys who I used to school with at the high school. Mm. And uh, I said, I used to beat these chaps at school, man. Mm. Now they speak English and I can't hear them. Mm. And I said, no, mom, I want to go back to school. I said, but who's going to feed? I said, I've got a problem. Because I want to go back to school now. Mm. My mother was struggling, but she came back and said, you know what? I know you are struggling because I was not educated. I could not give you a better life. I don't want your children to struggle mm. the same way. If you are running away from the history we subjected you to go to school. Now it was January 1976. I have to start standard five, standard six, and mm. so on. I was the oldest. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> the school was supposed to start at about, around about eight o'clock. It stayed for two hours. I remember, you know, the old schools, you had a mission and a school. So we didn't have all the chairs we had. So Mondays, you'd be taking chairs from the church to school. As we were delivering this, yes. one old lady, it's the opening day, they are registering the children, mm. came to says, yes, teacher. Like, can, you show, <laughs> can you show us? Because I was the, I was the oldest in school. Yes. Can we you show us around, we teacher? Did, yes. We, we didn't understand. She didn't care I was wearing a gray trouser and a white shirt. But I was a bit taken aback, but I understood, mm. right? And I was called by the teachers. They were meeting for two hours. Here we've been discussing here. I only knew the principal who was there when I left the school. The principal says, you must go to Standard 7. Standard 7 was a Form 2, an external exam. Mm -hmm. And the principal says, you can beat the children in Form 2, in that, in this, that external exam. This is exam. now you've just started Standard 5. Yes, I'm and supposed to start Standard 5. He says, forward. this one must go there. So they were disagreeing. So I was given three months in Standard 7. To study? To check if I can cope. Okay. End of March, I had to be evaluated. I beat the entire class. Wow. And um, I remember the principal saying, I certain chap you. from Maji, just family, says, you are number two, 
because there is no number two. Otherwise, this boy is alone in the class. Wow. That's how I exploited that opportunity. So I beat a number of other schools around. So that was standard seven. Yes. So I went to do JC. Mm -hmm. That was 77. Mm -hmm. I realized that towards the end of the year, my money had finished. Mm -hmm. So I had to go back to the mine around December after writing exams. January, I got a telegram. Come back, personally arranged. I got a first class. It was JC. Came back, nine. Uh, in 1978, December, yes, I think it was 78 December, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I had to go to the mountain. I was not doing well in 1978. Okay. Because I got involved in Christianity, suddenly I got saved and, and there was a preacher. And I think I got lost somewhere. <clears throat> I, I, that's, that's, that's interesting. It, it lost got, in how? Culturally, your identity? I, 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 as a, I mean, I was just a dedicated in Christianity. Mm. No longer focusing in studies. Okay. I remember I used to correspond with America, California. They were giving me the books mm. of Christianity. And I was no longer focusing. They, uh, at, at that age, when people usually rebel against the norm, they, mm. they, they, they misbehave. <laughs> they, don't, they don't get into <laughs> so a religion. I got a, my past was very poor in yeah. Standard 9. Okay. And uh, I went to the mountain, mm -hmm. December, January, February. I came back to mm -hmm. school. And I realized I had no money to continue school in 1979. And you've lost your bursary. I said, what do I do? I went, I had discovered my father that time. Okay. I went to him in Sasolberg. Mm. Sasol 2, you see Sasol 2 was opening that year. My father went to me to meet Mr. Foster, who was in charge there. Says, give my son. Uh, a chance to work here for a year, he can go back to school. Mm. And now I had to get my credentials from school before I could be employed. It's still 79. When I entered the school, the school stopped. Every child, every person left classes. I was received like a, oh, I was wow. a king Welcome coming here, from, yeah. from, I was a bit shocked. I didn't know what was the reason. Even teachers left their classes. I didn't understand and what, what was the reason. They didn't want me to go back oh, to work. Wow. Yeah. They missed me. They wanted me to continue to be that part of school. Teachers put money together. I said, we're not going to that work. Hmm. You must finish your, your what to call? Your metric. Your, yeah. your metric. You're going nowhere. A certain Mr. Komsana, who was a member of the PC, mind you, I'm an ANC person, gave me money. A certain Mr. Hessel, who was running a supermarket in Mobo, gave me money. They collected... I got exemption in my trick. Mayor, what, what, what did that teach you? I mean, an entire community came together mm. to make sure that you finish your dream. I mean, you're not young at that time at anymore. All. You're like but you will be surprised when I get, got back to Bojana being the oldest. The following year, older guys came back to school. Came back to school. <laughs> I, I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. At high school, I was no longer the oldest. There were a lot of older guys than yeah. me. So the reception I got gave me the sense of self-worth. Mm. It, it made me feel good about myself. Mm. It made me respect myself more. It made me think about myself even better. Mm. The other first luck I had, I had a mother and a sister who were very strong. In the family, there's a principle they taught us that we are responsible, each and every one of us, you are responsible for your life. Mm. So it doesn't matter what problem you find yourself in. The first thing you must ask, what do I do about the problem? Not who put you to the problem. Mm. Mm. So let's, that let's hold it there. Yeah, me Mayor, we're going to continue mm. with that. Because that, 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 that must have given you a lot mm. as you moved into your career in um, you know, getting involved more politically. Mm. Uh, after the break, we continue with Mayor uh, Gungubele. My Twitter handle is at Tepi Mutsukua. Stay with us, ABC News.
Thank you for staying with us as we continue to get up close with uh, Mayor of uh, Kuruleni, Mayor Gungubel. Let's, uh, let's, let's fast forward now. You, you know, you've, you've worked so hard. It's been such a long journey for you to finally obtain your metric. Mm -hmm. And you've got this new um, sense of self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get into the trade unions? Yeah. How do you become a leader Thank there? You. Immediately, I went again to the mining industry. I had no money to further my studies again. Yeah. Back to, I went to Hrut Flay Mine in Springs, where I was employed as a sampler there. Quickly, we lost our mother in 1980, around August. Yeah. I came home. I had to teach as an unqualified teacher. Mm. Uh, from the half, second half of 1980 okay. until 1981. Uh, 1981, I was taken to teach at the Fallow High School. Mm -hmm. I taught there for a number of years. Maths, they were not passing maths there. Mm -hmm. The first year, I got the more than 70% pass wow. mathematics. But it became very difficult because my salary was the salary of an unqualified person. Mm. So end of 1981, I, I realized I had to go back to the mines. To the mines. And already, because of my political conscience, my life was no longer easy in the trans guy. Mm -hmm. And I came back again to Doran Fandine, where I started. Worked there as something called Masiza. Okay. That was 1982. And then I worked there quickly. Around 1983, I was always yearning to have a profession. But because I was supporting family, yes. my sisters, my brothers, it was difficult to go and do a profession which is not paying. That's how I got to nursing in 1983, August. Wow. <laughs> and then I went to there to nursing, 84, 85, 86, 87, finished my oh, because diploma. Because you get paid as you train. As you train, yes. so I was able to, to support the yes. family. 1988, uh, I qualified. I went to Orkney, Westval, to work as a qualified nurse for the first time. Huh. Now I was yearning to have a degree. And I realized that Orkney was very far from Joburg. I came to, to, to Joburg. Yes. Got hired at Rand Mutual Hospital as a nurse and then registered with UNISA. To and study law. I did become law. I'm a become law graduate now as I speak yes, to you. Yes. And uh, political consciousness started strongly in 1979 when Reverend Chigane was addressing us in a youth tent in Pretoria, mm. being the young people of the church. When he was speaking there about uh, the omnipotence of God and also taking us through the, 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 the heavenly mindedness and being earthly useless or earthly minded and being heavenly, mm. the balance of all. Mm. And then those teaching really stuck in my mind. In 1980, by the way, I didn't tell you, around 1980, my life was funny. I also tried the theology. <laughs> wow. And, uh, but I wouldn't stay for too long. My consciousness was a bit confused. And, you know, uh, Minister, I think it's, it's, it's very interesting because I was looking at uh, your career within the legislature. Mm -hmm. You're involved in the health sector, mm -hmm. in the economic sector, mm -hmm. in the sports sector. Mm -hmm. um, and now I kind of understand that you had this personality that you, you, you like to try different things and you did them very well. What would you contribute that to? Uh, you see, if you don't have it easy in life, one of the things that becomes is adventurousness. You try everything that will take you forward. So religion to me was a stabilizing effect. Mm -hmm. It calmed me down, it balanced me and so on. So I got all those, became political conscious. By the time I'm in 1983, I became a member of, uh, 1982, I was in the mining industry. Mm -hmm. I became a member of NUM at, this, at its founding what to call stage. 83, I became a member of NUM, continued forever to be a member until I became a um, shop steward in Trent Mutual, Chamber of Mines, and later I led Kosatu here in Joburg, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. a Kosatu local structure combining Soweto, Joburg, Egruleni, and so on. And then later until the unburning, and I was also a, a, a national organizer of South African Health Workers Congress, mm. which was an affiliate of UDF, a health structure, mm. which later emerged together with NAMDA, which was another health structure of the movement. Mm. Mayor Gugumbelo, we don't have much time. We have about a minute left to chat. I cannot believe it. <laughs> Thank you, such a wonderful storyteller. I've just been listening to you. Um, I, I, you know, it would not be fair to end this conversation without asking, what do you do 
outside of work. Your life seems to have been this pattern of determination, of uh, getting qualifications. What do you do outside all of this? Outside of work, I follow sport. Okay. I'm a road runner. I'm a fanatic of road running. I've done about five comrades marathons. Mm -hmm. I've done not less than five two shield marathons. I've done not less than four city to city. Wow, I've man. done not less than four Soweto. I've run a number of it's road running and follow sport. And I also like music. Mm -hmm. Although I'm no, I'm no longer following either man I used to. Okay. Generally, that's it. Going out with my family, my wife, my yeah. children. Yes. And, and that's it. Uh, Maya, you know, looking at how you grew up, uh, we talked about it during the break just a little bit, uh, growing up in a close, supportive um, environment, what would be your advice to young men growing up in the South Africa that we have today if they would like to reach the levels that you have? In just The short seconds? advice is that to young people, life has been lived before you. Mm -hmm. And those who live life before you learn the lessons. Listening to all people, no matter they never went to school, mm. there's a lot to gain from their practical experience. Therefore, this thing of saying respect to those who are older than you, mm -hmm. it's for your own protection. Because the fact that you are young, it means there's a lot you don't know. Mm -hmm. Those who grew and experienced life before you have got a lot to share with you. School on its own is just one arena of development. There's a bigger arena of development there, the society with people who were there before you. Maya, you've been such an inspiration. Thank you so much for making the time to Thank speak to us. Much. And that's how we're going to wrap today's edition. You can be sure you're going to catch this one on YouTube, but you can catch us same time weekdays on SABC News DSTV Channel 404. And that website is youtube.com forward slash SABC News. And my Twitter handle is at Tsepi Thank you for staying with us. Till next time, bye-bye.